Hi students, I am Subramanya, lecturer in biology, Alpha Pre University College, Kiar Nagar, Mysore district. Dear students, in my previous class, I had discussed about, I had begun to discuss the topics of chapter number one in second PUC, twelfth standard biology, NCERT, that is the reproduction in organisms. And I had given you some of the basic aspects about the reproduction. I told you about the definition about the reproduction. I gave you the definition of the reproduction. And also we discussed about the lifespan and correlation between the lifespan and the size of the organism. And also we spoke about the variations in the lifespan. And in addition to that, importantly, towards the end of my lecture, lecture number one, I spoke about the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. So, to continue this class, children, I think we have to reconsider the discussion. I mean, we, have, uh, we, had, we need to have some recap of the discussion what we have made regarding to asexual and sexual reproduction. So, we will revise that. You see here, I have written asexual reproduction here and sexual reproduction here, children. And regarding to asexual reproduction, I told you that asexual reproduction is the reproduction by a single parent and I told you it's a uniparental reproduction. And sexual reproduction is a reproduction which takes place by two parents, it is biparental reproduction, okay? And then as a second point, I told you in asexual reproduction, variations are not seen. The differences between the individuals offsprings born for the same parents are not seen in case of asexual reproduction and we are going to consider the reason why the variations are not seen in this class and whereas in sexual reproduction variations are seen okay and then another one important point here is that during asexual reproduction in some of the organisms gametes may be formed gametes may be formed and though the gametes are formed fertilization do not uh, take place to give you example for, ex for give, to give you example in case of honey bee honey bee produces ova female honey bee when it produces ova the ova if it undergoes fertilization it uh, develops into female honey bee sometime what may happen this vova may develop without fertilization and when it develops without fertilization it gives rise to male honeybee so here gametes are formed but fertilization is not taking place just a vova is developing without fertilization to give rise to young one okay so here something like virgin is giving birth is reproducing and you know this uh, phenomenon is referred as Parthenon Parthenogenesis okay this is the extra point for your children it is not given in your textbook Parthenogenesis Partheno means virgin genesis means birth so when we consider this Parthenogenesis this Parthenogenesis is something equal to asexual reproduction fertilization is not involved though gamete is formed so here we have to emphasize this in case of asexual reproduction in some of the organisms gametes may be formed but it do not involve fusion of gametes whereas in case of sexual reproduction it involves gamete formation but it involves gamete, gamete formation and also it involves fertilization always okay and these are the differences uh, what we have studied in our previous class regarding to the differences among the asexual and sexual reproduction okay so now in this class i am going to explain you asexual reproduction in detail by considering some of the examples given in your textbook okay children so beforehand the discussion of the aspects which are given in your textbook. I think I need to familiarize some of the terminologies, examples which have been given in your textbook. And I need to give you some basic information which you are already familiar in your high school classes. It will be comfortable for me to explain you 
as well if i rebrush that again that will also be helpful for you to understand the topics which i am going to explain in this class okay students you see here i have written the diagram of a plant a typical plant the typical plant here the part of the plant which is present above the soil we call that as a aerial part you are all well aware of that the part of the plant which is present above the soil it is aerial part aerial part has got a stem leaves here in the diagram which i have written and the sub terrenian part the part which is present in the soil it is a root i have used a different color chalk piece here this is the root okay and this is the shoot and what is the structure of the shoot shoot includes the stem leaves and flowers this stem has got nodal region you see there is a presence of the node this is one node this is another node this is another node in between the nodes there is a presence of internode this is internode this is again internode and you can very clearly observe here nodal regions are the regions where leaves are born leaves are formed okay here you see there is a presence of leaves the photosynthetic structures in case of the plants and another important thing which you need to consider here is that between the stem and the leaf between the stem and the leaf in the axis in this axis you can see the axillary bud okay here this is the leaf and this is stem you can see the axillary bud okay aerial part of the plant body is having stem a stem has nodes and internodes nodal region bears leaves and axillary buds stem has got the function of supporting the plant it will bear leaves flowers are born and the stem is responsible to transport the food and water across the body of the plant and stem usually in common it is present above the ground and let us consider the subterranean part of the plant that is the root so when you consider the root you know the function of the root root is responsible for anchorage of the plant body and in addition to that the root is responsible for absorption of water and minerals and the root usually it is present inside the soil so this is the structure a overall structure of the plant body in general but what i want to highlight you is highlight you in this class is that you see children in certain plants the bottom part of the stem the basal part of the stem sometimes sometimes remains inside the soil you see here this is the soil this is the soil sometimes even the basal part of the stem remains inside the soil like this and you may ask me a question anything which is present inside the soil is to be taken as root which is involved in anchorage and absorption of water and minerals but how come this stem present inside the soil if it is present inside the soil what is the function of that and why can't we simply assume that to be a root yes your question is valid but if you carefully analyze it is present inside the soil but how to uh, assume that how to convince ourselves that it is the stem not a root if you consider the part which we i mean the, if we consider that particular part of the plant which is present inside the soil which we have taken as a stem and if we carefully analyze that you can see there is a presence of nodes and internodes in the underground part of the stem it shows nodes and internodes and sometime this stem may also produce the lateral branches like this children it may also produce a lateral branches and we are going to consider the uses of these branches and the presence the significance of the stem present underground later on okay this is the information which you require to understand the asexual reproduction this is one aspect and in addition to that i would like to explain another one thing i would like to give you the basic of that basics of the sexual reproduction during sexual reproduction 
you see sperm is formed ova is formed gametes male and female gametes are formed need not always be sperm and ova in uh, animals we consider them as a sperm and ova male and female gametes are formed this male and female gametes fuses with each other what we call as a fertilization to produce zygote okay zygote and this zygote is a product of fusion of sperm and ova right sperm is a specialized sex cell produced by male individual male parent and ova is a specialized sex cell produced by the female parent male parent will usually have different genetic background and female parent will have different genetic background and they carry the genes which shows variations among us the characters variations among us the characters and as because the sperm and ova produced by the parents with the different genetic background come together and fuse to form the zygote the zygote has got the combination of the genes from different background and this is something what we call as a genetic recombination and because of this genetic recombination we see variations in the organisms born by the process of sexual reproduction okay and this is the basis for the variations and you shall have this in your mind if you want to understand why variations are not seen in case of a sexual reproduction okay the first thing i explained you the basic structure of the plant and the second thing i explained you what the cause for the variation during the sexual reproduction okay so now let us uh, go to discuss the process of asexual reproduction with the examples given in your textbook i come back i will come to the theme of this class asexual reproduction with examples okay students i told you if you want to score more marks you shall concentrate upon the content of the textbook and the syllabus is there but syllabus is being narrated by considering certain examples in your textbook okay and syllabus is something same the content of the textbook and in our class i told you that we are going to consider and we are we will explain the textbook content and so that it will be easy for you it will be very easy for you to understand and in addition to that if you listen to my lecture it should be something like you are reading textbook and understanding that right now students i begin my explanation for the asexual reproduction okay what is the topic of the day asexual reproduction a sexual reproduction by stating the explanation given in your textbook in your textbook they say a sexual reproduction is a process of reproduction by single you please carefully consider these words which i am writing single individual single individual single individual parent parent capable capable of giving rise to offspring this is the sentence given in your textbook to explain asexual reproduction and this offsprings born like this are identical identical to each other as well they are copies copies of their parents okay we shall understand this how this a single parent is capable of reproduction and how the offspring are identical and as well they are the copies of their parents so let us probe this definition by considering the examples which are given in your textbook so i would like to familiarize the examples which are given in your textbook first before going to understand before going to explain you see here 
They have taken the example of amoeba, paramecium, a unicellular, acellular organisms, and then they have taken yeast, hydra, sponge, penicillium, chlamydomonas, ginger, banana, potato, mint, chrysanthemum, onion, and garlic. Here, strawberries is not considered in your textbook. I have taken that as an example to make you understand this one. Water hyacinth, agave, and bryophyllum. And here, cell division, budding, spores, rhizome, tuber, sucker, bulb, runner, offset, bulbil, leaf bud. So students, simply you can pause the video uh, in this context, context and you can go through these words many a times before listening to me. So that it will be very familiar for you to understand. Okay. So now you keep this sentence in your mind. Right. I will take examples one by one and I will explain the very meaning of the definition of the asexual reproduction what they have given in your textbook. Okay. Right. I will take uh, amoeba. You know the amoeba. Amoeba is a, a cellular organism. It is irregular in its uh, shape. Right? Found in water. This amoeba, during favorable condition, it will grow and increase in its size. Like this. Okay? And then uh, later on, this amoeba elongates. The amoeba elongates like this, having a constriction at its middle point like this. And even the nucleus will also elongate and assume the spindle shape, somewhat like this. Right? Later on, what happens? This constriction which is formed at its midpoint will deepen further. It will deepen further like this. And the spindle shaped nucleus, the nucleus which has elongated, will split up and to form two daughter nuclei. And then the cytoplasm will also split up eventually producing two daughter amoebae. Right, the amoeba is simply dividing. And by the process of division, you have understood children, this is a single amoeba, a single parent has produced two daughter amoebae. You see what a wonderful thing is happening here. Right, a single parent is giving rise to two daughter amoebae. And here these two daughter amoebae formed are receiving the genetic material from the same single parent. So because definitely they will have the same genetic character. There is no recombination. There is no fusion of gametes. Okay. So here cell division as well the reproduction is one and the same. Cell division and reproduction is one and the same in case of amoeba. So now we can conveniently assume that here amoeba is reproducing asexually by cell division. Amoeba is reproducing asexually by cell division. Okay. And then let me consider another one example, which is also a unicellular organism that is paramecium. Here amoeba is showing irregular division. A single amoeba is giving rise to two cells, two equal cells. And we call that we call this as a binary fission. Binary. Binary fission. Fission means splitting. A single cell splits. Single cell splits to give rise to two cells. That is a binary fission. Two equal sized cells are formed by splitting of single parental cell. So it's a binary fission. Amoeba reproduces asexually by binary fission. Okay. In the very same way, paramecium, paramecium, uh, protozoan, like amoeba, okay, protozoan, so here, amoeba, paramecium, will also divide will also divide transversely to give rise to two daughter cells. 
this is also binary fusion so here these two examples which have been given in your textbook still many examples are there and i'm going to consider all these examples in additional points classes in future here we are focusing on the textbook content these are the two examples where which which are which are considered in these lower animals uh, to explain asexual reproduction okay so now let me go to the next example the yeast a yeast a unicellular fungi yeast is a unicellular fungi it is like this yeast cell is somewhat like this it is scientifically referred as a saccharomyces saccharomyces cerevisiae it's a yeast uh, organism used for the fermentation and all you have studied that in your classes this yeast it will divide by the process of cell division but here it is not binary fusion a cell will not simply grow and divide to give rise to two equal cells two equal dot cells here what happens towards one side of this yeast a small projection how to growth is formed like this the protoplasm which is present in this mother cell will migrate to this small outgrowth a small bulb like structure and the nucleus meanwhile divide to form two daughter nuclei this nuclei will also migrate to this cell which is forming towards one side like this okay so now this a small cell formed like this is a nutritionally dependent upon this larger cell a larger yeast cell and this cell eventually will grow and increase in its size like this okay and later on it will undergo constriction at its bottom the point where there is a connection between the uh, mother cell and the daughter cell it will split up and develop into new individual cell so here a uh, one cell is forming a bud a small bud to give rise to another cell so you can say this as a budding yeast reproduces by cell budding okay and let me consider another one example we have yet another example to consider here that is hydra hydra is a cilium terrait you have studied in your first year pc it comes under phylum cilium terrait it's a diploblastic animal it's a diploblastic animal it is having a tentacles like this okay it's having a cavity cilia enteron outer layer is a ectoderm and inner layer is a endoderm you have studied this so what happens during a favorable condition in a particular region on the outer wall the cells will start to multiply and because of the multiplication what happens there's a formation of a small bulge like this and this bulge will start to grow and increase in its size in its size and it will form tentacles like this okay later on it will increase in its size further tentacles are formed and at the bottom it will undergo constriction like this it will detach and form another one independent hydra okay children so this hydra is nothing but derived from this single parent there is no fusion of gametes and the cells present in this hydra are derived from this mother hydra and definitely the genetic makeup of the individual will be alike to its parents and as many number of hydras daughter hydras formed by the process of budding will definitely have the very same genetic character they are genetically identical as well they are the copies of the parents so hydra reproduces by budding hydra reproduces by budding and now let us go to another one example which is given in your book there's a sponge you have studied in your first year pc sponges are those animals sponges are those animals which comes under pilum porifera pilum porifera okay so this poriferans poriferans they have the body like this let me consider a sponge by the name skypa you have studied that in your practical class as well along with your theory class you know this sponge has got many pores over its body 
over its body during adverse environmental conditions when the conditions are not favorable some of the cells in the body of the sponge okay you have studied that the cells present in the body of the sponge will be something like this we call them as a coenocytes and some cells are flat like this we call them as a pinacocytes but you go back to your first year pc syllabus open your textbook and you please refer that okay and in addition to that many amoeboid cells will be there different types of amoeboid cells will be there there are certain type of cells amoeboid cells what we call as archaeocytes archaeocytes okay these are amoeboid cells present in the body of the sponge these amoeboid cells inside the body of the sponge archaeocytes will come together like this come together like this all of them and around this there will be a formation of protective layers like this the two protective layers will be there and it is and these layers protective layers are supported by spicules okay these are uh, tiny needle like structures made up of silica or calcium carbonate you have studied that these are spicules spicules okay and uh, in one of the side in one of the end there will be a presence of a opening what we call as a micropyle right this is the micropyle right micro pile okay and this uh, structure which has got bank of archaeocytes a store of archaeocytes protected by the two protective layers are supported by spicules and this structure can withstand scarcity of water desiccation it will not dry up okay and this can strive through unfavorable environmental conditions when the environmental conditions are not favorable it can still retain its vitality or keosites are there and with the return of the environmental favorable environmental condition this uh, archaeocytes can come out of this uh, structure and they can give rise to new sponge and this very structure we call that as gemmule gemmule okay so gemmule is uh, produced inside the body of the sponge somewhere in the wall of the sponge like this it's a sort of bud we have studied about the bud in case of yeast the bud was formed outside the body outside the cell like this outside the cell like this and we studied the bud in case of hydra in case of hydra you have studied that the bud is formed outside the body whereas here in case of uh, gemmule sponge the bud is present formed inside the body of animal so if you go a step ahead you can consider this the budding in case of yeast and hydra we call them as a exogenous budding exogenous budding in case of hydra and yeast whereas in case of sponge it is endogenous budding in your neat examination give an example for endogenous budding that may be a endogenous budding in your neat examination there will be four options four examples will be there yeast hydra sponge which animal produces which organism produces the gemmule the endogenous bud so this type of simple questions may be there and even they can, they can make questions more complicated based upon the information given in your textbook okay students still we have many examples which we need to consider okay have written over the board right i will come back in the next class and explain you the remaining aspects thank you all for listening to me thank you <laughs>